God is going to give us power. And that spirit is dwelling in you and I. And that spirit is alive inside of us. And it's in today's service. So you are going to open your mouth this morning. And you are going to say, Jesus. Yes, <laughs> 
looking on it, but here's the fact. It comes so powerful it's an impact you actually can reject. But what I see when I see people worship, I see them worship the voice and not the God. I see them sing to the piano chord and not to my name God, oh Lord. I see them lift their hands, but not their hearts. How much can they have done? It's hard and comes so deep that He gave the Holy Spirit to us at no cost. Just so we could be born, He gave His Son to God. The little baby that slept in the manger will be sent to the cross. That's why He taught us. He fought for us and He went for us. And see how Father has brought us. Oh, wait. He thought I was going to forget He died for us. Pay the price for us on the cross. We must understand the gifts the Father has given to us through the cross. We now have the Holy Spirit living in us. It's alive in us. Abide in us. And forever alive in us. Oh, glory. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. 
Be magnified in our hearts. As we receive your word, the heart of our nature. It gains root downwards in our hearts and pierce upwards to the praise of your name, and we cannot remain the same. We are forever changed into that image, that glory that we see. We belong to the lineage of glory. We belong to the lineage of glory. We belong to the lineage of glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Yeah. We are having souls in the church today. Celebrate Jesus! Sunday, I'll be with you the opportunity to have a great 
get experience. It's like a race to God. The race. Are we together? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay, let me know. Let me know. I know you're already tired. In the month of May, the Lord helped us. But the Lord has helped us so far. We have been learning about supernatural advantage such. Yes, and we have had diverse of testimonies. Diverse testimonies. Miracles. Downs we even encounter. We have shared some today, but of course, because of the structure of the service. We started the month with learning about what? The mercy of God. Is that true? We went further in the teaching to learn about divine favor and how to walk in it. Last week, Sunday, we learned about the ministry of angels. Today, we are learning about the most important being in the world today. The singular most important advantage of God for the believer, the person of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me say beforehand, that this is not an in-depth study of the Holy Ghost. You have done a number of series on the Holy Spirit. Is that true? I've taught you about the Holy Spirit. But then today's teaching is customized to fix the day, to bring you to an understanding of how the Holy Spirit is your advantage. How is the Holy Spirit the believer's advantage? Why we took the prayers? The person taking the prayer said, the Holy Spirit is your advantage. But how is he my advantage? That's what we hope to achieve in this service. I pray to God that you open your heart for all that God has to say in service in the name of Jesus. And that He does give you the same thing. So, if you're right, which I expect you to do, the topic for today's service is Paracletos. Everyone say after me, Paracletos. P A R A K L E T O S. Paracletos. Say it again, Paracletos. I need you to say it again, Paracletos. Glory to God. Don't be concerned about the word. Turn your Bible to me quickly to John chapter 14, verse 16. Almost everybody that has to be has read that text. John chapter 14, verse 16. We're reading it to 18. The Bible says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Verse 17. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sets him not. Neither knoweth him, but he know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Hallelujah. Verse 18 and the last. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. This was Jesus speaking to his disciples, and by extension to you and I. Verse 16 is my emphasis. He said, I go. But I will pray the Father before I go, that he will send you another comforter. So this was about the end of Jesus' ministry. And he began to tell the disciples how he was going to die soon. Come on. Imagine this person that has been so good to you, that has been following, that has told you so many things you are going to do in his name. Suddenly, his speech changed. He began to tell you how he was going to leave you. <laughs> like the disciples of Jesus, you also feel so Is that true? So Jesus began to come for them. He said, but even if I go, someone else is coming. I will not leave you alone. And you know, normally or naturally, a man that is about to die, or the most important information of a man is realized at the point of his death. So so sad, so very good. He said, Come oh, my sons, there's this particular point. Is that true? Or there's this particular child, it's your brother. It is when a man is about to die that, you know, that moment he, he reveals the deepest things in his heart. So this subject is so important because he was left towards the end of his ministry. He said, I'm sending you another helper. Now here's where it gets interesting. He says, I will send you another comforter. The word another comforter, or the word comforter, let me start here, is where they call the word paracletos. Paracletos means someone that moves with you to help you. So, I want to bring it to the Do you, do you mind? I need attention. He says, another comforter. The word another, dear, used in this translation, 
for this day for every purpose. I'm trying this somewhere. Another is the word alos. Everyone say alos. So when you put it together, you, you get the word alos parakletos. Now, this word another in the Bible also means another word in Greek. There is alos and there is heteros. Follow me, then. Heteros means another helper of a different kind. So let me use this simple analogy to get to understand what I'm saying. But if I use the analogy, let me talk about, let me say what Alos is. So, Heteros is another helper of a different kind. Alos is another helper of the same kind. So, the analogy I was talking about. There's a father, a mother, and an aunt. The father can be, the father of the child is the guardian of the child, is that true? The mother of the child can also be the, or is the original guardian of the child, is that true? The aunt can be the guardian of the child, is that true? But if the father is absent, the mother can feel him as a helper to the child, and she is another of the same kind, because she's a parent, is that true? She's the parent of the child. The father, so it's the same kind. Now, when this parent wants to feel in for the parent, she's another helper of the different kind. She doesn't occupy the same powerful position to make another child. But the father and mother is that true. So when he says, Amos Paracletos, Jesus is telling you that this person that is coming is another of the same kind. He's not less of me, he's not my messenger. Is God coming to help you? So when we observe and investigate the ministry of Jesus, we realize that everyone loved Jesus because of how beautiful and wonderful he is. He was. The disciples felt sad because all their lives with him, he helps them navigate the will of God. But suddenly he was living. He now said, that send the another help. The Holy Spirit. And you know the beautiful thing? He was said already in the declaration, so let me just say, let me just go ahead of myself and say it. That Holy Spirit, that Alos Paracletos, is now living inside of you. Glory to God. That Holy Spirit. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Allah Muhammad is shattered. Are we together? Is it making sense so far? But he that is joining talk to the Lord is what? Come on, let me say it together. But he that is joining up to the Lord is what? One spirit. Is either it is either this is a huge heretic statement, heretical statement, or it is true. And as long as it's divided, it is true. You know, it's hard to grasp that that you have the same. That's the implication of this statement, actually. That the same Spirit of God that worked in Jesus' life and ministry is the same Spirit of God that has been put upon all flesh that believe in Jesus. There is no counterfeit. That is, the Holy Ghost in you, Nandi, is not half of the Holy Ghost in Jesus. Yeah. Let me make it even more difficult for your mind to wrap around. The Holy Spirit that woke up upon the face of the deep in the beginning of creation, that wants in partnership with the Father to create the whole world, is the same spirit that is living inside of you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want you to think about it for a second. That he that is joined with the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. So you know when people say that one with God is a majority, is that true? Yes, you are already in the position of that party. Let me do something more correct for, for you to get what I'm trying to say. In Nigeria, when the season of elections is actually, there are certain people whose hopes and confidence is because of the kind of people they have back in them. Let me use a case study that you all can relate with. Is that true? The rumor, we don't know it's true. We all know the this rumor that the current governor is behind the man that emerged. As the governorship representative or candidate for the ABC statue. Yes, sir. Now, you think that when he was campaigning, he was campaigning like every other person? No. Or let me use another example. 
you know, for example, in Lagos. What's his name? Saul. He knew that because Tinubu was backing him up, he didn't need to be concerned. We saw it there when Tinubu turned his face on Amoni. Is that true? I'm using, I'm using current issues so you understand what I'm saying. So, with men, men can be bold and confident that they have the advantage over others because there is a big man behind you. But for you, there is a big man living inside you. There is a big man at work inside of you. If you don't believe it, so why do you quote the scripture every day? He that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. You see, this is the mystery about believers. We just say things and not think of the implication of it. Listen, if you don't believe the Bible, don't say it. Because you are just operating a religious system. But if you're going to be in Christ, you have to take the word of God and have a value. If the Bible says the greater one is inside of you, the greater one is inside of you. Yes, this is how it's your, it's your advantage. And maybe someone is not so interested in the concept of the Holy Spirit. Let me address you now that you are taking the or making the wrongest mistake anyone can make. Because the Bible says, Paul the Apostles, Peter speaking in the house of Cornelius, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. What did he say? How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who did what went about doing good and killing all that were oppressed of the dead? For God was with him. How was he able to do and fulfill the will and plans and purpose of God for his life? Because the Holy Spirit was there. That Jesus was born by the Spirit, didn't go about doing his ministry until he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then he walked about doing good and healing all the oppressed. Well, if you say you're a Christian, you are automatically saying you're a follower and disciple of Jesus. Discipleship means that your master or you replicate the life of your master. If your master depended on the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, you must depend on the Holy Ghost. Jesus himself spoke and said in Luke chapter 4, the Spirit of the Lord is what? Upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He said the, the reason behind the success of his ministry is the Holy Ghost. No wonder he said to his apostles, don't leave Jerusalem. Wait. Listen, he had taught them. He had stayed with them for over three years. He had mentored them. He had discipled them. But when he was going, he said, wait. Wait. Let the Spirit of God be called on her. And you know what? If you read through the Bible, everyone that lived an outstanding life, every character in the scripture that you admire, the members of the heroes of faith are there because of the influence of the Holy Spirit in their life. Believers, the Holy Spirit is not reserved for a pastor. You say, ah, this man is full of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not reserved for an evangelist. Oh, the Spirit of God over the poverty place and people are saying. The Holy Spirit is not reserved for a prophet. He said he was moved by the Spirit and he got to prophesy. The Holy Spirit is not reserved for a teacher. He said, I speak by the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is God's gift and fountain to every believer. He says, I will pour my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall do what? Come on, I can't hear you. Your sons and daughters shall do what? Your servants and maids, maidens. He was telling you that no matter the category you belong to, whether rich or poor, young and old, whether bold or free, the Spirit of God that is to be born upon all flesh is for you. Yes, the, name of the Holy Ghost is for you. The Holy Ghost is for you. The Holy Ghost is your advantage. So, how is the Holy Ghost your advantage? To guide me to open your eyes to how to the specific ways the Holy Ghost is a supernatural source of advantage to the believer. I've broken his ministry into five major parts. Now, these things I'm going to share are not the only ways the Holy Ghost helps the believer. But because of time and for the purpose of simplicity, for you to understand, I will, cut, I will teach this morning about your helper using these five, five categories. So, number one, or one of the ways the Holy Spirit. Brings you to the place of advantage.
advantage is that he gives you divine revelation. Everyone start having divine revelation. Now before you conclude that you know what I'm saying, just give me some time. Divine revelation. Let me say this. The first revelation that the Holy Spirit brings the believer into is a revelation of God. For God is spirit. Those that was worshiping was worshiping a what? A spirit and a truth. He is called the spirit of truth. Only by the spirit of God can a man know the Lord. Only by the spirit of God can a man truly, truly know the Lord. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. Paul prayed a prayer, which is a deep revelation of what the word of Christ must continue to seek. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mentions of mention of you in my prayers. Verse 17, what is the prayer? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you what? The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the what? Knowledge of him. Now the accurate translation of this, or modern version of this, this way, which is better, that he may give to you wisdom and revelation by the Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is already a wise spirit. So you get wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. So just knowing God at face value is not enough. There is revelation in knowing God. That is why, as I taught you, that when God said to Moses, I have shown myself to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as who? As the Almighty. As El Shaddai, the multi blessed one. But I've come to show myself to Israel, as who? As Yahweh, your salvation. I tell you, brothers and sisters, it takes the Holy Ghost to come into revelation of God. You want to know the Lord, you have to do it with the Holy Spirit. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Because we teach, you open your scriptures, you open the Bible. Glory to God. I want you to see these things yourself. I'm not just being a motivational speaker. Everybody read 1, 2, 3, go. Glory to God. Yes. Glory 
of God. Now here's the beautiful thing. The revelation of God is the revelation of the world. I'll say it again, maybe you catch that. The revelation of God is the revelation of the world. You remember the account of Jesus and the disciples? He asked a question greater. He said, Who do men say I am? Is that so? And they said, Some say you are Elijah. Some say you are the prophet. Some say you are this and that. Some people went ahead to see you are John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Well, he said, You are John the Baptist. And then Jesus said, Who do you say I am? Everyone kept quiet. And Peter now said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You know what Jesus said? He said, Come on, say it, you know it. Come on. Jesus said, You didn't know this by your own thing. He said, Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. I told you that it takes the Holy Ghost to know God. He said, Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. But Jesus didn't stop there. He said, For today, your name shall no longer be Simon, but you shall be Peter. Upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gate of hell shall not be there. The moment Peter knew Christ, the revelation of who he was, was manifested. So, when you sing the song, let's not go for the song, I just song. When you say, I know who God says I am, it's not because you heard your neighbor say, This is what God says I am. Because if you just recite it, it will shock you. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> it's not by saying it because you heard someone say it. As I'm teaching you now, what is happening is illumination is coming to your heart. Then you begin to walk in that reality. What do you mean by, by the image and likeness of God? So, revelation of God brings divine revelation. Reveals God and reveals you to you. And even on top of that, I said it's not enough. The Holy Spirit brings you into revelation of all that God has done for you and all that you can now do in God. Let's go back to the initial one. Continue for verse 17. So we continue the prayer. This was his prayer. He says, That the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of him. Verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Verse 19. And the exceeding, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who are to believe. According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ Jesus, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Now, don't get confused. You know, when you read Bible, it's not confusion. It's not simple because if you follow it, you So, to explain or understand what Paul was saying here, we need to go back to what we read. Or one of the scriptures that reveal what Jesus told his disciples. John chapter 16. Please hold it. Don't be confused. Just hold it. Don't forget that. John chapter 16, verse 4. John chapter 16, verse 14. Verse 12. Verse 12. Verse 12. From verse 12. From verse 12. And I have this is Jesus talking to his disciples. The same conversation he was having before. He says, I have yet many things. To say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. Verse 13. We're reading to 14. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he shall show you things to come. Verse 14. He shall glorify him, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. So what Jesus was communicating primarily here is this. The disciples were confused, as you would be if you were in their shoes too. They are telling us you are going to redeem us. They are telling us that you are going to restore the kingdom of God. They are telling you you are going to die. Well, beyond Jesus, 
Every person they had seen or experienced who have died did not come back to life. Is that true? Their lives ended automatically. So what minutes you <laughs> that you are going to die? So Jesus was telling them that these things that I speak to you, you may not be able to understand them now. Is that true? But when the Holy Spirit comes, He will open your eyes to know why these things have to happen. So Paul was praying that your eyes will open to see what God has done in Christ Jesus and how He relates to you. Because let me tell you something. Contrary to the expectation of the Bible, many believers think that the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus is just the wonderful display of God's power. So this time, Jesus resurrected. That's it. That's all. He resurrected. That's all. Paul is now praying that God will open your eyes to see how the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ relates to you. Thank God, God is powerful. Jesus said, I came down my life by myself and I will be done. So in his mind, it's like the death is what he made me. It is what he does. So Paul is praying. So Jesus said to the disciples, He said, You may not understand. Is that true? So he said, You will not understand. But when the Spirit of God comes, you will have a better understanding. So after Jesus died and was buried, the disciples left and went back to fish. Is that true? As everybody, as humanly as you are, they were. They said, Well, you don't die. That's it. And they went back to fish. Even when Jesus came, they couldn't believe it. They waited in the upper room. But when the Spirit of God came, glory to God, those guys were no longer waiting again. Did you hear that the disciples ever want Jesus? You know, when you're watching Jesus or you're watching Pastor of Christ, let us stop it. I'm not like this. It's important to be with me. It's not me. It's I first time. But read your Bible. The disciples ever have this great What are they looking for? I'm not saying it's a bad thing. They will be for you to go to the world. They will be for you to go to the world. Please go. See the things. It's not true. Experience it. But not your experience it for the same thing. Because the apostles did not defend back to that again. They saw the power, the need for that death. So on that day when the Holy Ghost came, Peter stood and said, This Jesus died for you, so that all of you will come into the promise of Abraham. If you believe, you will receive now. And 3,000 people receive the life of Christ that day. Because something has changed. Is that true? Yes. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 2. Last time. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Verse 10. Everybody read verse 10 together. One, two, three, go.
tried to say why she was still depressed. He said, you study your Bible and it doesn't make sense. Why? You are reading it without the water. That I'm reading my Bible. I don't know if that's ever happened to you. Something you have read all your life. Suddenly you stumble on something that you cannot believe it. You can't believe it. You say, oh my God, what is this? What is this? What happened is illumination. The Spirit of God has opened your eyes. So that text that says, He that is joined with the Spirit is one Spirit with the Lord. You don't believe that part. You have to say, What? Further investigation, the Spirit of God starts to tell you that it means that the Spirit of God is one with your Spirit. You cannot tell the Bible that says, You can never leave you or forsake you. This is what it means. This is the reason why God finds our crowds at the world. It's not because of what people just stay together. Paul tells us that marriage is a revelation of what? The union between Christ and the church. So he finds out it because the union between Christ and the church is unbreakable. So when the marriage breaks, it's not that the story is supposed to be there. Do you get it? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's be running. So I said number one, divine direction. Is that true? No, I said what? Divine Divine revelation. Number two, divine direction. Say that from a divine direction. I want to read a popular text that you know. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Romans chapter 8, verse 14.
Faith not missing out. How that the lady was praying, said, Lord, is this my husband? And the Lord said, What? No. He said again, Is this my husband? No. And the Lord said, You are not meant to be together. And she said, I get together, together. And she said, No. Many of the decisions, or many of the times we're asking God for divine healing, we already have our decisions set in our minds. You already know what you want. All that was false an inward witness that tells you, go this way. Lead me and I will follow you. Lead me and I will go. The Spirit of God can lead you, can navigate you in every step of your life. Everyone, every decision you want to make. Let me use one practical example and I'll go to the next point. When we're about to move to this place, you know, when we had this problem where we were, of course, we wanted to move for a long time, but we had this problem. I was set to move. And so I went to the Lord in prayer. I just came back home one day and then I sat down on my bed and I, I said, let me pray about this. So I set my note aside and I began to pray. I prayed in the spirit and then the words just formed in my heart. And uh, it just formed in my heart. The spelling just formed. So I wrote it down. I pushed it one side. And I said, yeah, and, uh, I was like, I'm not sure that's the can give it to. I said, okay. Then I called now what is here. I said, let's go and check what that means. Do you understand? And then we began to check. And you know how the one line works? As we were checking, we started seeing the possibilities. Glory to God. So after seeing the possibilities, we said, my goodness, it's time. Those, you know, then we said, pray. After I prayed for like, you know, God just allow you for no reason. After I prayed for a while, and then come and pray, it will pop up and vanish. It will just pop up and vanish. Even in our conversations, we'll talk, then I'll just see. If I won't make it worse, but let those some people hear about them now, they say, ah, oh, no way. I say, it's because it's not. I'm not hearing God do that. But long story short, we tried the other things that we wanted to do. It didn't work. Then I looked like, you know, it was difficult too. It was not easy. But then it was not hard. It was simple. Did you get it? It was not complex. It was simple. Not just faithful. I made it to happen. I'm talking about the practical areas of your life. God can lead you. Maybe, maybe some of you cannot relate what I'm saying personally. You know, I've said this time and time again. Maybe you will get it. You know, when, when, when I was in Abuja, I like to use example now because, you know, many people excuse the power of the Holy Ghost when it comes to work. Is that true? Say, no, if the Holy Ghost is for church. It's not for church. We are here to just fellowship as a brethren. Then do the work outside. In the secular organization, when you came to our office, there was a financial advisory firm. When you came to our office, you have papers everywhere and every staff had a one. So when it came to um, coming up with a business plan or coming up with a financial model, what you have to do was to pray in the spirit. My boss was calling me. So we pray in God. He said you must get genuine ideas. Fresh ideas. Say the Holy Ghost is in you. You say the spirit of truth is in you, put it to work. I will pray. If you come, you think that's why in a university. It's just writings everywhere. Listen, I'm not lying. I promise you, you can come and find me after the service will call you, you ask. There were some contracts that we bought that was not public. We knew by praying that it was available. So when we finished praying at Abuja, he would just jump out and go to a particular office and say, Sir, is there something like this happening here? He'd say yes. And then he dropped the proposal. I'm not saying the Spirit of God is for God in game. I'm just telling you that there is not the only ghost can come help you. There is no way you can go to This is how we can be our advantage. Some of you, you have expressed it before. 
He said, do not put your money here. Don't put your money here. But your flesh is pushing you to go. Don't put it. When you, you know, when the money gets missing, you now remember that. Ah! There was something telling you, telling you. Then what did you do? Something. <laughs> Glory to God. Number one, we said divine revelation. Number two, we said what? Divine revelation. Number three, divine ability. Everyone said divine ability. Divine ability. The Bible says, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Hallelujah. Yeah. And you shall be my witnesses. How God anointed Jesus was said over and over again. With the Holy Ghost and with power. The secret behind the miracle working power, the charismatic ministry of Jesus Christ, is the person of the Holy Ghost. So you want to walk in the charismatic, you cannot do without the Holy Spirit. It's the power of God, the dunamis. Look at First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse two. First Corinthians twelve two. First Corinthians twelve two. He he know he know that you were Gentiles carried away. Having gone to these dumb idols, even as you were there, verse 3. Don't pass on it. Now, there are diversities of spirits, but what for the same spirit? Verse 5. And there are differences of administration, but what? For the same law. Verse 6. And there are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which worketh what? All in all. Then he went for that to begin to list out the gifts of the Spirit. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, the Spirit of faith, walking of miracles, discernment of spirit. Speaking in the language of the spirit, the interpretation of tongues, etc. He said, This is given for the profit of all. By the spirit of God, we can step into a charismatic ministry. Glory to God. Amen. A charismatic ministry. So that when somebody needs a healing in your house, when there is a work of faith you need to do, listen, especially you who God has spoken to. This is what many believers do not know. That when God gives you an assignment, you will still walk faith to carry it out. It's your advantage. So you just lay your hands. And it's easy. You just know things by the Spirit. You know things about people and events by the Spirit. The Holy Ghost brings you into that charismatic ministry. And it makes the difference in your life. It makes a difference. I want to use a practical example and forgive the example. How many of you have seen or have come across people that were seemingly so happy and then the next day or a few days after you hear that the person committed suicide? As, have you, even if it has never happened to you, have you heard it clear before? But then there are other people who are at the brink of committing suicide, so called. And says, God said I should call you. I'm free for you. God said I should check up on you. You know, something happened on one on Monday morning. You know, something that I touch people about. Make sure they know. So somebody <laughs> uh, somebody prayed and sent God their angels to me. They say God, teacher. Let's use you to experiment. <laughs> Say, Lord, let your angels be so powerful and do so and so. And you know the condition the person gave? Ha! What I heard him, I said, I want for you. He said, if the person is my pastor, can you imagine? If the person is my pastor, let's just do and so happen. So I went to drop myself from school, and then I came back home. I was just talking to my wife before I went to pray. And the wife was talking. She said something. Then I remember the person, I said, ah! Oh, 
this person, okay, no, let's do this and this and this and this. I was like, okay, let's finish this meeting. I said, no, let's do it now. Then he did it. I said, if I do it again, another thing. I didn't know what was happening. So when I finished, and I reformed the person, the person said, I was crying. I said, I saw yes. I said, what? <laughs> Not to deny my ministry. <laughs> so, listen. Mind you, the thing that the person was requesting for, I was not in the most favorable position to carry it out. In fact, my mind was occupied with something else. But the Spirit of God was able to bring the thoughts and sponsor the idea to the specifics of what would make the person happy. Specifics. Not said it just <laughs> Glory to God. Or rather, divine ability. Divine ability. Yes. Divine ability. It's not for your pastor, no. It's for you. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You cannot be orthodox without being charismatic. And you cannot be charismatic without being orthodox. What I mean is this, if you claim to be orthodox, it means you stick to the old way of the prophets, it starts with you and the apostles. If it's the case, the apostles were charismatic. So if you are not charismatic, you are not orthodox, you are claiming something else. Yes. And if you are charismatic, you must be orthodox, because you stick to the way of the So there's no difference between the two, it's just human beings, our emotion. Glory to God. So you must embrace it. What I said number one is divine revelation. Number two, divine direction. Number three, divine ability. Number four is divine influence. Everyone says I'm a divine influence. Divine. Well, divine influence is different from divine direction. And I want to borrow an illustration I gave to you during the campaign last year. Glory to God. When I was speaking about the Holy Ghost, I taught you on the Holy Ghost as the God of the kingdom. Is that true? Is the governor of the kingdom. Now, to make you understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit in respect to him being the governor of the kingdom, I have to use a present day reality to explain that. So, when the United Kingdom, the Queen, for example, in the colonial age or the colonial era, went out to colonize nations, you know what they did? When they invaded the nations and took over a nation like Nigeria, is that true? What did they do? They put someone in charge of that nation. The person was called the governor. What was the responsibility of the governor? The responsibility of the governor was to translate and carry the culture, the lifestyle of that kingdom, their colonial masters, and execute it in the country that they are now colonized. By doing that, the authority, the rulership, the dominion of the queen is extended to that nation. Is that true? Case study in Nigeria. Is that true? When we observe Nigeria, who were our colonial masters? The British, is that true? What did they do? They put a governor here. He ensured that we didn't just speak house and people are going What did we do? We spoke to this. He ensured that you drink this only ever they go see or Miyamuka or something. You ate what? <laughs> he made sure that the lives are even down to our government. Glory to God. We emulated them so that when you came to Nigeria, you knew that though the queen was not in Nigeria, Nigeria was submitted to the British. Is that true? Well done. Law in the colonial age is that the Holy Spirit. They have been sent to bring you into conformity to the kingdom you belong to. So now, by the Holy Spirit, we do not only speak house at the Yoruba, we pray in the language of the Spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Holy Ghost has come to colonize you, to make you like the kingdom you belong to. Yes. So, all like your former ways, when we now see how you dress, how you look, this man is from Zion. Yeah. Glory to God. That you cannot see heaven. The governor, which is the Holy Ghost, has come to replicate the life of God that is in heaven here on earth. 
Everyone say divine influence. So that he can persuade you and turn you into another man. So the songwriter said, he brings you into obedience to Christ. <laughs> He's your colonial master. <laughs> I know this is something for us, but say Holy Spirit. <laughs> so when they see you, oh Jesus, when they see you, they can't tell the difference. They saw men named like Christ for that one, and they called them Christians. Christ like they didn't need to say, see, I'm a Christian, no, eh, eh. they saw them. Do you know the disciples who give themselves the name, right? You know, say, I'm a Christian. You know, I was watching the, I was in the Twitter space, and someone was talking. I'm not trying to insult anyone. And when he was talking, he said, ah, I'm a Christian, no, ask this person. <laughs> he said, ask this person, the person knows. <laughs> Glory to God. You know, no offense to him, but you get what I'm saying? They did, that's not what the disciples did. They saw them and said, ah, this man looks like Christ. This man is living like Christ. This man is talking like Christ. That's the beauty of discipleship. And only the Holy Ghost can bring you to that conformity. He's a colonial master. There's a song that I love. You know, I sing to the Lord my best now I said to him, I said, Thank you, Lord, for taking me as I was. Thank you, Lord, for turning me to you. Everywhere I go, they say, you look like him. Everywhere I go, they say, you look like Jesus. Everywhere I go, they say, you look like him. When I look into the mirror, I see you. Shalaba. When I look into the mirror, I see you. Hey, thank you, Lord, for taking the assignments. Maybe you understand this something we were seeing before. I said, I found a friend in you. Ha! I can still remember the day the Lord gave me that song. My comforter, my president, my keeper, the seal of God in me. I found a friend in you. Someone I can count on. I can rely on. Without the Holy Spirit, you can't function in God's perfect will for your life. He will influence you. The Bible says, it is God who works in you to will and to do his good pleasure. So you will come to a place in your relationship with the Holy Spirit that he no longer asks for your permission. The Lord doesn't need to lead you. Your decisions are not prophetic. Yeah. That when you take a decision or take a, make a step, you are taking the step that God will take. Yes, sir. That's why we declare and say, I have the life of the Spirit in me. When I move, God is moving. I cannot make a mistake because the Spirit of God, they are now in witnessing so much. Uh, like a, is it seen by us? It's gone. Say we don't have people that are to see me here. Yeah, it's not the business, so, so I can excuse myself. <laughs> now, when the Holy Spirit works in sync with you, that is ideas by your ideas. His thoughts are your thoughts. This is how a man can live above sin. Where it says in Galatians chapter 5, it starts from, it says, walk in the Spirit. Verse 16, and you shall know what? You shall not fulfill the law of the flesh. It's not by trying to stop sinning that you will stop sinning. No. The sin will magnify because you are looking at it. You stop sin by embracing the life of Christ. It's like an addiction. To stop my mouth, get another one. Hope you know. Yeah. Most times when, when people go into therapy to stop an addiction, they get them, they put them in another routine. Another routine will break that habit. So if your routine is to live conscious of the Holy Spirit all the time, you see, that's what will make you say and make the declarations you make. How Joseph can be in the place where he had seen no man who see no man who stop him or enjoy the benefits of the house of Potiphar. He said, how can I do this kind of get into the Lord? So even you two in the middle of the scene, you say, no, I can't be the devil of the Holy Ghost. That's what Paul, you know, I love Paul. Paul does not correct like the money trust does. You know how Paul corrects believers? He reveals to you who you are. He said, You are bigger than this. So, sin should not be like you. You are bigger than it. When you look at this, you are smart. I'm bigger than this. That's what Paul said. He said, Do you not know your body is the temple of the living God? So, when you are tempted to body, you can say, Body, you are the temple. You are the temple. Can the temple be joined with the harlot? 
Can you carry the body? The temple of the Lord to go out of tree? No. You do as you are. When you start to think and talk like that, you break sin. Let me tell you how people fall into sin. You don't know. You are, you are trying to conquer the sin or the temptation in your head. Talk! Imagine a girl. What? I'm not, it's not a gender to ask. You don't say that. Guys, I'm asking for the most. Oh, that one. I can say that for guys. Imagine Joseph to pray. He gets in the night to practice something and then he starts to head towards one corner. Then your whole body is activated. You know what I'm saying? Once your body is activated, you ask her, Ah, I remember the teaching that taught us for some So he said, My body is a temple of Holy Ghost. He does, there's no hard to reverse that conversation back to us. No way. The patient has died. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you are sick, that's why you can stay so exactly in sin, get married. Once, of course, you pay, your body is not fire, we say it's in the neighbor. You are not seeing it. In fact, maybe you already know it. I know that also some of you come on, you know, from your breath, you were so dedicated as nuns and I know, I know. You don't feel anything. I know. It's not for you. Hold your peace. For those that do, when it comes, you just pray the spirit. I know, you know, some, some guys are starting to spar a The guy is this path, you will come back to address you. You just, you, you just saturate your atmosphere. You cannot, you cannot be listening to Mr. Joseph. Joseph, you know, say, I need to die. You know, <laughs> die for you and then. <laughs> So it's a conscious effort. To walk in the spirit is a what? It's a conscious effort. I told you it's not true. The Lord gave me a long time ago. You know, when I was single, is that true? You are, you are full of the spirit. And you step out in a place like maybe like Abuja or Lagos. That the scene is not, it's not, you're not in point, it's looking for it. When you turn your eyes everywhere. The Lord says, once you look this way and you see something, don't look there for no cause. I found out that that time when I was doing it, everything in your body is telling you to move the other way. Everything wants to turn the other way. If you master the act, you can't. Then when you see this, as I'm saying, there's nothing wrong with being tempted. It is the falling that is the same. Do you understand? But somebody say, ah, I just saw something now. Oh, I'm dead. Say, so Jesus wasn't tempted. Did he do anything wrong to be tempted? The devil asked him. Tempted him with the things he wanted. Say with the things he wanted. It will not be a temptation if he didn't want it. He was hungry. He wanted to take over the world back to the kingdom. Glory to God. Say it again, divine influence. At last. Okay, let's go back again. Number one, we said divine what? Revelation. Number two, what? Divine revelation. Number three? Divine ability. Number four? Number five is the divine life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You already know this glory to God. Hallelujah. That by the Spirit of God, we don't live like the men of this world. As if there's no hope. As if there's no hope. We are not hoping that we will see Jesus one day. We know there is a witness inside of us. That's what the Holy Spirit does in the mirror. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. Somebody is thinking they are happy and you say that. You know what Jesus said to the disciples? He was still in there. He said, do not rejoice that you were able to cast out them. He said, rejoice because your means are the truth of That even if you have something as hope in the kingdom of God, hope is not like it. You know, even the word hope has to be revived. It's not what we think in English. Hope is that it may not happen. But in the Bible, hope is used to mean it is surely going to happen or are waiting for it to happen. Do you have it? Hope in English means it might not. But let's see clear. Yeah. But when the Bible says to have a sure hope, it means that it will happen. But we're waiting for that time. In whom you also trust them, after that you heard the word of the truth, the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that you were believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Verse 14. Of the purchased possession unto the 
praise of his glory. That the confidence of my walk with God is rested at the shore of the fact that what I have the spirit of God in me. And when God comes, he will not leave me out. He says the Holy Spirit is a down payment. It's an earnest. The word earnest is a business term. To describe the payment you give in hope that you will not make it complete what you So he says the Holy Spirit is a down payment. If the Holy Ghost is a down payment, I wonder how the elements will be. We are just talking about the Holy Ghost now. I said the Holy Ghost is a down payment. Yes. He says it's a down payment. Is my down payment. So I can be confident. You know, I said it last week, when we talk about the vision of Jesus, it's actually also. I said, God's mindset and approach to life is totally different from ours. So he saw Stephen being stoned to death, and he did not. As Stephen stood and said, forgive them, for they don't know what they are. Is that And he said, I see them. I see the Son of God. Our joy, our assurance, is that even when we live this world, because of the Spirit, we don't believe that there is an afterlife for just believing sin, because of the Spirit of God that is in us. We are sure that we will end up where he is. So that if I go to heaven, the fire will point because it's the spirit of God I'm carrying inside. It's my assurance. So I no longer serve God in fear. I serve God with boldness because His spirit is inside of me. And if I have, you know, it's not the money. It's so, it's so intriguing to that, that we can believe that there is a heaven and hell that we cannot see. But we can't believe God for it now. Your confidence in eternal salvation should support some confidence in now. I don't know if you can understand. Your confidence in eternal salvation should support some confidence in God now. Let's read the scripture. And I'll go to that. Romans chapter 8 verse 7. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. In simple terms, Lydia, you have resurrection power for you. You don't talk about it too much, so it doesn't mean anything to you. you know. So when he clouds about it, let's go read some power. And then laugh. You know, I'm not saying it's not practical. We have, but let the things, the word of God, not lose value because we are making mockery of it. That resurrection power is at work in it. So what that means is this when Jesus returns, the mechanism for us to resurrect is already at work in now. There's no force coming from heaven to pull you up. He says, if that spirit dwells in you, it will do what? It will quicken your mortal body. It will revitalize it. This is the word of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> this is the word of God. It will revitalize it. So we can believe God for the resurrection of our bodies. We can believe God for the healing of our bodies. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. If you have an internal hope, you can also have a present hope. Yeah. If you believe it, I don't have time to, I won't tell you how to activate that many short spirit, but we'll do that for this thing. We feel like a part. Very, very long. But for me to say this, it's my last time I have. I have to be at first. Now, one of the ways, I'm just giving you a tip of that. One of the ways you can activate the 
the ministry of the Holy Ghost in your life is by praying in the Spirit. I pray the Spirit at one time. Pray the Spirit what? At one time. Let me use your local, let me use local, let me use a local example you can relate with. Is that say I'm learning French. Or maybe this has happened to you. Maybe I try to learn your local dialect. If you travel to another place where your local dialect is spoken to you as often, do you know you start to forget it? Is that true? You start to forget it. But the more you speak it, you know people that can speak their language a lot are more conscious of their tribe. Think about what I'm saying. If you speak English above every other language, your tendency to tilt to that kind of lifestyle is stronger than someone that speaks their language primarily on the journey. Is that true? Absolutely. Think about what I'm saying. So if you are pressing on the spirit and you pray the spirit, you pray the spirit a lot, you will tilt more to that. You will create that atmosphere. Imagine if that's a consistent lifestyle. Pray the spirit always, all the time. Your relationship with the spirit of God will be unbroken. You will not be dividing it. And they say, I have not prayed for one hour today. Let me go and pray so that my life will come. The moment you say, what should I do now? The answer has come. Because prayer has become a culture, not an option. Ever since I've been from today, I pray the straight ball. 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 Plan for it. Plan for it. Let it not come after everything else. Let it come with every other. Let it flow with every other thing. Pray the spirit of I want to give you a challenge. Holy well, Ghost challenge. Now in the next, for the next seven weeks, have this thing. It's a real challenge. Even if you, I don't see you in one week's time, if I speak in three months, I will ask you. And I will not forget. Trust me. Because it's going to help you. Just experiment. Just experiment. Maybe you used to pray one hour every day. Or you used to pray only when we do morning prayers. Six o'clock. For the day. And that is fine. Challenge yourself and do this way. I will do it morning after the evening. I will pray the time. Even if I don't have the time, maybe I'm a doctor. I'm always on call. That within five minutes, I can use my back to pray to pray and come back. I can use my lunch to pray to pray and come back. I can use the time of walking home and driving home to pray and come back. I can use my relaxing before I'm to come to pray and come back. You make it a regular thing. Do it three. I'm saying, Regular. I'm emphasizing the word regular. That is, I do it in the morning, I do it in the afternoon, I do it in the evening. I do it regularly, the same time, for the next seven days. I will not ask you, not now, I will do it. Then on the go, Pastor will ask you. It will show. Listen, there is a glow. Ah, there is what they call the glow of the Spirit. Listen, I know when you're not praying for long, though. when they say let's pray, you will do that. Like, Shut up, Shut up. <laughs> then when you don't pray for one hour, you don't pick it up. When you are praying for seriously, you come in the middle. You may say, let's pray. Come on, you are just picking it up from the because that perpetually on fire. Hallelujah. Glory yeah. to God. Yeah. And that's my, that's my vision for you. That you become a global fire. Yeah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. When you bless, pray the Spirit one more time. Pray the Spirit. Pray the Spirit. Rakaba. Shakanaba Rakasote. Shakaba. Rubel and the Gila Masude Rosha. Esteka Kapaliata. Sukatabe. Rabade Shalaba. Rabaka Sute. Angela Masuda Ramadesha. Nebitoska. Rakasuta.
but I gave it to the way. Yeah, let your hands be up. Say this after me, Father. As I give up on my income, I see your hand upon my resources. Causing more doors to open. Causing more streams to open. And I bound in plenty for every good work. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Give the tithe to your giving them if you have them here. If you don't, if you have given them already, that's fine. Everyone else, if you offer, receive them above your head. Say a word of prayer. It is not a donation. It is part of your Christian consecration. Hallelujah. Lift up the office. Say a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the privilege to be. I thank you for every heart that is lifted up. No hand shall drop that way now, but they shall continue to abound in plenty for every good work to the praise and glory of your name forever. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. I pray that multiple streets of income will open. Supernatural finances will come and increase will come on every hand that is lifted to the glory of your name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we ready to give the Lord a praise offering? Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody shout yeah.
Glory to God! This will help us 
Also, on top of that end pharmacy, by 3.30 p.m. on Saturday by 9 a.m. and on Sunday, we meet here to pray. It's going to be an hour of prayer, not hour, hours of praying in the Spirit and building up ourselves in our most holy faith. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming again. 